Are you learning JavaScript? Let me save you some time and trouble with these seven tips from my 10 year journey. Number one, you wanna start checking if you're learning JavaScript or programming. So if you're someone who already knows the basics of programming, like what is a variable, what is an array, how to iterate over an array, then you are someone who's learning JavaScript. But a lot of the times you're trying to learn JavaScript and you don't really have a solid foundation in programming. And that's okay, you can still learn JavaScript, but you maybe have to orient yourself into covering the basics first before jumping into the JavaScript specific stuff. This is something I've noticed in my Learn JavaScript.online course. I had some students that would come here that have never worked with arrays and then they would find things a bit confusing. And this is exactly why I created a programming course for absolute beginners. So there you can take your time, you can spend five chapters on functions, a couple of chapters on return, really learning all the details and then making sure you have a basic understanding of all of these things. It's going to be in JavaScript, but then we don't really go too advanced. So when you cover the basics in programming, then you can move on to learn JavaScript properly. If you're one of these people, check out the course, it's linked below, it's called learnprogramming.online and it's interactive, you will learn things step by step and it's also supported with the flashcards app. Number two, define your expectations with regards to the syntax. Are you someone who has previously worked with C++, Java, maybe some PHP? If yes, then the syntax of JavaScript will be relatively easier to acquire because it's a little bit similar. The languages are not similar at all, but the syntax is a little bit similar because you're already used to the parentheses, to the curly braces. On the other hand, if you're someone coming from Ruby, then you're gonna find these parentheses and curly braces quite confusing. And that's fine as long as you're aware of it. So if you are this kind of person, what I recommend to do is every time you learn a new syntax, like the if condition or the for each with a callback, what I recommend to do is to grab a pen and paper and try to write this on pen and paper. I'm not doing it like universities where you have to write a whole web page uh, on pen and paper, but just writing this new syntax on pen and paper will really engrave it in your brain. It's not gonna work from the first few times, but write the for each, for example, take the array and then do dot for each and then open the parentheses and then write the callback and then the curly braces. You might mess it up a few times, but if you do this for two, three days, so two minutes a day, eventually you're gonna memorize it. So then you can move on back to the computer and then hopefully it should be easier. Another tip if you're coming from a completely different programming language where the syntax is different is that when you make a syntax error, try to count the open curly braces and closing curly braces and then do the same for parentheses and try to see if somewhere something is missing. Eventually these things will be in the back of your mind and then you'll be able to see those patterns without thinking about it. But in the beginning, take your time, it's perfectly fine. And if you're really stuck, and sometimes happens to me, it's sometimes easier to just copy the code, move it to a new file, and start from scratch. And then keep on running your code until you know where you hit the mistake, and then you'll be able to backtrack and maybe fix it or know what kind of mistake you're doing. So for example, if you have a long function and then there's a syntax error and you're not aware where it's happening, you can write it step by step again, and then maybe you notice when you write the for each, you're screwing up the curly braces. And then this is where you can go back to the drawing board, write it pen and paper, and then write it correctly. Tip number three is learn modern JavaScript. I often go on the learn JavaScript subreddit and answer some questions. And it really hurts when I see those questions and they're using var, confirm, and alert. You should really not be using these things anymore. You should, at some stage, I'm gonna cover that in a later tip, know about var, why it existed, what's wrong with it, but don't start with these things. Start with let and cons. It's going to simplify your life. You're, like Even the topics such as closures become so much easier when you're using let and const. I also see people using the for and then create a variable like a counter and then increment it and then put the condition to iterate over an array. You can just use a for each here. So there are use case for the for iteration that's often counting up, counting down or counting and then skipping a couple of numbers. But for iterating over an array, you should be really using for each. There's also for off, but yeah, most of the times you can use for each. So make sure you start from ES 2015, don't take older courses, skip the old documentation, and then it's gonna make your life easier. Tip number four, don't start with the weird parts of JavaScript. And I've seen that happen in a lot of curriculums where the first lesson of JavaScript is saying that it's such a weird language and then Everything is an object, look, the array is not working, and then if you add this number to this array, you get this. 
yeah, these things are weird, but you don't really have to start learning these weird stuff. You can learn a solid foundation of the language, especially if you start with a modern ES2015+, and then you can learn about these edge cases later on. Matter of fact, how often do we stumble upon these things when we write actual code? It's not that common. So for example, in my course, I only cover var, hoisting, and some of the weird stuff on chapter 40, because it really doesn't make sense to start with these things because the recommendation is to use let and cons, but you should also know what to do in case you find code that uses var. So something you should learn is not necessarily all the edge cases of var, but if you find some code that uses var, how can you convert it to let and const? Tip number five is a bit closely related to the previous one, which is know about the legacy, but at a later stage. So I'm not saying you should completely skip the legacy, such as var immediately invoked function expressions, you will stumble upon these, you will find some outdated code on the internet. So make sure to leave room for this, but schedule it until after you're comfortable writing JavaScript code. So by just positioning it at the end, you're gonna make it easier for yourself, you're gonna see progress, and that's gonna help you a lot. Number six, don't learn jQuery. I know this is polarizing, and maybe not everyone will agree with me, but this is gonna save you a lot of trouble. It's 2020, you may watch this in a year or two from now, you will not need jQuery. There's only one exception, which is if you're applying for a job that requires you to learn jQuery. I have to say these are not so common anymore, but these things can vary geographically. But don't invest your time learning jQuery. Only learn it if it's absolutely necessary for a job. Now, you might be saying, yeah, but I want to build my website, and in my website I need to have this plugin that I can only find in jQuery. Don't use it. Trust me, because if you want to have some nice animation, you're going to have to add at least 100 kilobyte of jQuery, and then you're going to add your plugin, and that's going to slow things down significantly, especially on mobile. So try to write it from scratch, or maybe find an alternative that's going to be much better. Number seven, learn the fundamentals properly. There's a lot of concepts in JavaScript, so make sure to cover the fundamentals properly before moving on to advanced stuff. So I see a lot of people going to really trying to understand how the prototype chain works, which is something important to know, but make sure to cover first the fundamentals. And I can give you some examples of that. So in my opinion, the fundamentals are strings, numbers, arrays, and all the methods on them, like join, filter, sum, functions, arrow functions, lexical scope, classes, promises. Promises are actually super important. And Never let anyone teach you fetch before you learn promises because fetch is based on promises. So also make sure to cover promises. This is super important on the web. So as a closing note here, I just really want to tell you that making mistakes is really part of the progress. Almost every single person who learned JavaScript has forgotten to write at some point the keyword return and kept staring at the function. Why does it say undefined? Why is it undefined here? It, it's a mistake that we make and then it gets engraved in your brain at some point, and later on you can find it in a snap. So when you know that making mistakes is part of the progress, this is going to make your life easier. So don't get discouraged and keep on going. So that's it for this week's video. Make sure to check out my courses for programming, JavaScript, and React, and I'll see you in the next one.